Welcome, my dear friends, to your health and your salvation series. I am your host, Pastor Moise Law. I'm a registered nurse in Canada, and our special guest speaker today is Dr. Alonzo Vega. Dr. Vega is a medical doctor and is also a naturopathic doctor operating in the country of Costa Rica. Dr. Vega also operates his own private clinic, a very successful and vibrant clinic. And today, Dr. Vega will be presenting on vitamin C, cancer, and arthritis. I would really encourage you to invite your friends and your families to share in this presentation. And I am confident that you will enjoy this presentation. Very well. Let us continue with our class. We're discussing illnesses such as arthritis, such as lupus, and those that deal with collagen, illnesses such as Raynaud's phenomenon and multiple sclerosis, which wouldn't manifest themselves if the body were, was able to rid itself of free radicals. And there is no other antioxidant more powerful than vitamin C. And something interesting is Otto Warburg, winner of the 1921 Nobel Prize for discovering the cause of cancer. He mentions no illness, including cancer, can survive in an alkaline environment. And we're going to discuss this further when we get to that class on cancer. But an acid-free medium, an alkaline medium, is an environment in which cancer cannot thrive in. And Warburg also mentioned all illnesses are acidic. And where there is oxygen and alkalinity, there can no longer be illness, including cancer. What vitamin C does as a function, it deceives cancer cells because cancer cells are much more metabolically active and they generate a lot of metabolic wear. They use sugar as a fuel. And as I mentioned previously, the mo sugar molecule, biochemistry is very important in this, is the function that we're able to compare vitamin C and glucose. Because if you administer vitamin C dosages to a patient, then you're going to see a spike in high glucose levels because the apparatus itself is tricked into confusing vitamin C with sugar. So vitamin C is captured by the cancer cell and it blocks the Krebs cycle and then the cell is eliminated. So the cancer cell is gone. Dear friend, if you have a history of cancer in your, in your family, then use vitamin C intravenously. And I'm going to explain this because through the application of 25 grams, which is 25,000 milligrams as a therapeutic treatment, as a protocol, look in your country for this protocol so that you're able to obtain and apply vitamin C intravenously to your, your body because seven grams or 15 isn't enough. It's just a prevention, but a treatment needs to be surmounted with 22 grams and above. In our clinic, we use 25,000 milligrams, which is 50 times the dosage of a pill. I personally use 100 times the dosage of a pill once a week because it fills you with energy, it gives you better skin, better complexion, you have more energy and you are able to, to work. So it also deals positively and it has wonderful results with a host of illnesses. So the application must be intravenously because it saturates the tissue, it washes the cartilages, it helps form collagen and it helps heal cartilage. So it stops premature aging and helps sagging of the skin, hair loss, and other illnesses. I can give you a long list, but then here is a short list of the reach that vitamin C has in, com um, in combating aging, stretch marks, overall health of the skin, because I'm not an aesthetic doctor, but there are wonderful properties to be rescued of vitamin C and the function that it has on the skin. So we're also dealing with stress and it helps managing stress by removing cortisol. So autoimmune diseases also, it eliminates antibodies, antigens and free radicals and it removes oxidative stress. It also is formidable in combating arthritis, lupus, oxidative stress, cancer of any type, multiple sclerosis, viral infections, and bacterial infections. Also, if you have low 
immune systems, cardiovascular diseases, cerebrovascular diseases, and cancers of the colon because vitamin C is able to deactivate the KRAS gene, a gene that makes chemotherapy ineffective. Patients need to know that tumors of the colon, the rectum, and gastric tumors are resistant to chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So vitamin C can be added as a complement. I'm not saying replace, I'm saying complement that chemotherapy and radiotherapy with vitamin C. So in colon cancer, the KRAS gene is inactivated with a magnificent result through applications of vitamin C. Also, allergies are affected and acute myocardial infarctions and diabetes. So dear friends, through a minimal effort of using vitamin C at least once a month for the course of three to four months a year, you're going to experience positive results because it's one of the many antioxidants, but it is the most powerful of all. And it also helps in repairing tissues of the body, repairs and maintains cartilage and viral diseases that it protects you protects against. And here in at Bethesda Clinic, we apply a protocol of alkalinization. So what does it mean to alkalinize? It's simple. Let's consider the cell as a city that's surrounded by a fluid, a moat, and the nutrients enter the cell through this fluid and the cell opens its doors and it allows the fluid to enter. But then the toxic byproducts are left in this fluid. The only place it can sequester these in. So it turns into a pool of toxins. When we eat a lot of junk food, little fruit, don't chew enough, have a lot of stress and don't sleep well, then it turns our cells into a bad environment, acidic. So it's not my statement, but 1931, Otto Warburg tested that in most cases, a cell will become cancerous after being deprived of oxygen for 48 hours. So we need to do, we need to apply a protocol to alkalinize ourselves in which we're drinking in a cup of orange juice, then eating breakfast, and then we're drinking red vegetable juice that includes carrots and other vegetables. And there's a variety according to each patient. But then we are also giving a red juice. So note the sequence, orange juice, then you eat breakfast, and then you have a red juice, and then you have a green juice, and then you drink water with baking soda because you're alkalinizing your body. And after that, you're eating lunch, and then you're drinking carrot juice with two lemons and a sweet pepper. So we are turning our, ca our cancer patients into an alkaline system environment through an alkaline diet so no one's eating meat in this diet it's a diet filled with fruit and salad because we're we have to teach ourselves to make our own dressings so that we can experience changes dear friends we're going to expand more on this topic when we get to the cancer module but we're going to we, i just wanted to basically spark your curiosity that with an alkalinization protocol, an adequate diet, and a megadose of vitamin C, we are experiencing positive results in the life of many cancers, cancer patients. So we're able to deprive the cancer cell of the nutrients it needs and eliminate it. So I want to continue with some more information on vitamins that reduce the amounts of vitamin C. So oral anticontraceptives, some antibiotics, and acetyl salicylic acid are substances that make your body lower the amounts of vitamin C it stores. And then illnesses that reduce vitamin C, such as cancer, of course, first place, diabetes mellitus, infections, operations, and stress, which make you lose vitamin C. It's even found that in lab rats, uh, when subjected to stress, it reduces their vitamin C. So intestinal illnesses, increased alcohol consumption and smoking cigarettes. I want to conclude with this. Vitamin C doses. You might say you're wrong because I looked on the internet and I found that you only need about 50 to 75 milligrams of vitamin C a day. But Linus Paulding, winner of the Nobel Prize, mentioned that 
these are guidelines left so that you do not die or get scurvy. But in reality, vitamin C could be the most important fountain of health and fabrication of collagen. So let me explain this quickly that you may understand from a different perspective. Let's think differently. Not only how much vitamin C we need, but also how much collagen we need. So let's compare our organism to that of a lab rat because a lot of studies are done on rats. So a rat weighs about 200 grams and it's able to fabricate or synthesize 5 to 6 milligrams of vitamin C a day. Now I can multiply that 200 grams and make a ratio, but I can't really do that because there's a very important rule left to us uh, by Galileo in the year 1638 which stated the law of mechanical stability. This is exponential. So let me explain. A rat uses less collagen because it weighs less. A human being weighs more and also walks on his two legs. A fish uses less collagen because its body weight floats in the water. Yet we must stand on our two legs and be supported by tissues and these tissues need to be sustained. So a rat of 200 milligrams has 5.2 grams of collagen and a man of 70 kilograms has 3.72 kilograms of collagen. That's double the amount of a rat with 200 grams. So we have more collagen than a rat. So we need more collagen and we need more vitamin C. But then there is the law of metabolic stability that the body will create more collagen if it needs more. Since we walk upright on our two feet, we need more collagen. We exactly need a ratio of 80 times more than 70 kilograms of the rat. So not to make this too long, a woman of 55 kilograms needs more than a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. This means more than two pills of 500 milligram and a young child weighing 25 kilograms needs 525 milligrams of vitamin C daily. These are 25 to 28 times more than what the recommend uh, what is recommended online by the FAO or OMS and why because we need to think about function small microbial species are able to synthesize vitamin C in great amounts so that they can have enough collagen so dear friends let's remove the blindfold because many times human beings get ill because of ignorance and lack of knowledge we need vitamin C in great amounts so administering these intravenously guarantees that these are able to come into the tissue and we no longer call them vitamin C but we call them a miraculous medicine that's able to attack lupus that's able to reduce stress attack prem premature aging and with God's help we're going to learn and share this information with others and remember let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food we thank Dr. Vega for that wonderful presentation about cancer, vitamin C, and arthritis. Cancer, one of the most deadliest form of disease. You know, one of the deadly thing about cancer, my dear friend, it's basically a disruption, a malfunction of the DNA of the cell. So the cell multiplies uncontrollably and just keep multiplying without stopping. And one of the terrible thing about cancer is that it spread, it metastasizes. It spread not only to adjoining tissues, but even to distant parts of the human body. And cancer is deadly. And sin is like cancer, my dear friends. It's deadly. It brings death to mankind. Not only physical death, but eternal death, spiritual death. God never intended human beings to die. In fact, when God created Adam and Eve, God gave them free access to the tree of life. And there was no restriction to the tree of life. But unfortunately, man, Adam and Eve, made a wrong decision. They made a bad choice. They chose the enemy of God. And the whole human race fell into condemnation. And sin has been devastating the human family. Everything that we suffer in this life, friends, the disappointment, the sorrows, the broken homes, the drug addiction, the violence, the murder, the natural disasters, the emptiness, the suicide, the sickness that we experience is just a result of sin. But there is good news, friends. 
the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel. Because where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who left his glorious throne and humbled himself and became a man. He took our human flesh. He lived as a man. He went around doing good. And then he offered his precious life as a ransom for your sins and my sins. And Jesus Christ, his very name is Savior, friends. He has come to save us from the deadly cancer of sin. Sin is pervasive and only Jesus Christ can deliver us and cure us from sin, my dear friends. But God is not a God of force. He invites us to come to him for healing. He says that the thief, that is Satan, the enemy of mankind, has come to steal, to kill and destroy, which is a fact, friend. But he, Jesus Christ, has come to give us life and to give us more abundantly. Not only life and health in this present life, but eternal life, life that measures with God, a life without sin and sorrow and disease. And he wants us to accept this wonderful gift of salvation, my dear friends. Jesus Christ is the only hope for mankind. And in fact, even if we live a perfectly healthy life because of sin, unfortunately, we still die. You know, I say if we live long enough, we are going to die. So, but we shouldn't worry about the first death. We should do our best to make sure we live a very healthy life as long as possible, as God wants us to live. But the real blessing is eternal life, friend. This life is just temporary. So I invite you to commit your life to Jesus Christ. And at this time, let us really pray. Bow your head with me as we pray. Lord God of heaven, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation by Dr. Vega. Thank you, our friends, Lord God, who have joined us from all parts of the world to listen to these presentations, dear Lord God. And Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have not abandoned us human beings. We lost human beings to ourselves. But through Jesus Christ, you have taken up your position in our human encampment, even in our human habitation. Lord Jesus, you came to this world as a man. You lived as a man and you died for the sins of all mankind. And we thank you Dear Jesus and Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your only begotten Son for us, Lord God, to save us from sin, this deadly cancer of sin. And Lord, we pray that thou will bless all our visiting friends, Lord God, those who have joined us from all over the world. We pray that thou will bless them in their lives, bless them in their families, in their relationships. Bless them, Lord God, with their health. And I pray, Lord God, that the information and knowledge that you have given us over these series of lectures will prove a wonderful blessing to every one of us who join in. And Lord God, I just pray that thou will be with us as we continue to go through this journey of your health and your salvation. And I pray, Lord God, that our friends will be able to join us for our next presentation. Thank you for your great love and your tender mercies, Lord God. And we ask that thou will go with us, protect us, and guide us. Until next time. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us. And I look forward to having you with us next time. This is your host, Pastor Morris, saying goodbye for now.